everything you ever wanted to know about machine heads. Recently, I saw a survey on what guitarists would do to modify their guitars. And the most common answer was to change the machine heads, which actually surprised me because I thought it'd be pickups. But after seeing that, I thought I'd do this video on everything you need to know about machine heads and why you might want to change them. Subscribers to this channel, or people who might have seen my recent videos, might remember I did a video where I tested three strats, two original American Fenders and a cheap copy. And whilst the cheap copy did really well on sound, I did have issues with the tuning. So during this video, I'll also replace the machine heads on that guitar and another guitar so you can see how it's done. Before we look at that, let's just look at the basics of machine heads in case you're considering changing your own. The machine head layout or array. If you're thinking of replacing the machine heads on your guitar, the first thing you need to consider is the layout or array. And whilst this might not seem important, it really is. Because if the machine head isn't in the correct place on the guitar, one, the mounting points might be wrong, and two, the gearing might be back to front. So when you buy machine heads, it's really important that you buy the correct machine heads for the layout of your guitar. And this is also important for left-handed and right-handed guitars. You actually get left-handed tuners for left-handed guitars. The most common layouts you'll come across are the six on one side layout, which is more common with Fender style guitars, and the three a side layout, which is more common in Gibson style guitars. But you can find any type of layout, including the four on the bass, two on the treble, or five on the bass, one on the treble, or inverted, two on the bass, four on the treble, etc. The strangest layout I've ever seen of machine heads was on a Mugabe guitar, where the machine heads were laid out in a perfect circle. However, even on this, if you were to replace the machine heads, you'd replace them with the standard three-a-side style machine heads. Because the layout of the machine heads is so important when you're replacing them, usually when you're shopping for new ones, you'll see that the layout is either in picture form or written down somewhere in the description. Choosing the correct machine head mount. Now, this isn't as important as the machine head layout or array, but it is important if you don't want to leave nasty traces of your old machine heads, for example, holes in the wood. The machine head mount then is how the machine head is fixed to the guitar. And this can be done in a wide range of ways. For example, two screws. Or sharing screws between the machine heads and an extra screw on either end. Or it could be mounted with one screw and a bolt. Or finally, just a bolt and two locating pins. And when I say a bolt, it's like a threaded bush that goes over the tuning post and through the guitar to hold it into place. This method of mounting a machine head is very common on modern Fender guitars, where they use two pins to keep the machine head straight and make sure they're all aligned, and just one bolt to mount the machine head to the guitar. On some acoustic guitars, particularly nylon strung ones, you can have the machine heads mounted in strips of three or six. And you also find this on some older guitars, both acoustic and electric. Most of the time, the machine heads mounted on strips are what are called open machine heads. And this is because you can see the workings of the machine head because it's not covered up. You can also get covered machine heads, 
where the cover is held on by the mounting screws. So if the machine head's not mounted to the guitar, you can actually take the cover off to see the workings of the machine head. And finally, there's sealed machine heads, where the workings are all completely sealed up. These days, the sealed machine heads are by far the most popular choice. However, it doesn't mean that the other machine heads are no good. I've got a couple of guitars that are over 100 years old and they have open machine heads that still work perfectly. When replacing your machine heads, if you choose a different mounting system, be aware that you might be able to see the old holes in the back of the headstock. And if you're okay with that, that's all well and good. But some people might not be happy with that. If you find you have no choice and you have to fit machine heads that will leave exposed holes, you can buy a metal plate that goes behind the machine heads to hide the holes. Or you can just use a bit of wood filler and varnish to disguise the holes. Out of all different mounting styles, I think the easiest one to get wrong is the one with the bolt and the mounting screw. And you need to make sure you take note of what angle the mounting screw comes out at the bottom of the machine head, because they can come out diagonally, straight down or straight across, and anything in between. So, in order to avoid having to make a new hole and having an ugly empty hole on the back of your headstock, it's wise to look for the correct fitting for your particular guitar. Replacing vintage style machine heads. During the three strat test I did recently, the guitar that was giving me trouble with the tuning was this Donna strat copy. So I decided to replace the existing tuners with new locking tuners from Goika. And I made sure I chose the ones that were the same kind of fitting as the existing ones, which were vintage style. Here's how I replaced them. The first thing you need to do is get the strings out of the way. If you're replacing the strings at the same time, it's probably easier because you can just take the old strings off and throw them away. However, I was keeping these existing strings, so what I did was put a capo on just to keep the strings in place whilst I did the job. I'm obviously speeding up parts of this video just to get through it and so it's not too boring to watch. Before I start fitting the machine heads, I'll check that they're all there and everything I need is in the package. Now I'll loosen off the strings and remove them from the tuning post. The capo should keep the strings relatively tidy, but even so, be careful when you're moving the guitar around, cause the ends of the strings can produce a nasty scratch if you allow them to rub against the varnish. And given the choice, I'll always take the strings completely off and put new ones on. Once you've removed the strings from the tuning post, turn the guitar over carefully so that you can access the screws on the back of the machine heads. As I said earlier, these are vintage style machine heads, which means they basically have a screw in between each machine head and then a screw on each end. So I'll just remove the screws and the machine head should more or less just drop out. Now with this style of machine head, the bushes are just pushed in. However, they can be fitted pretty tightly. So sometimes you need to find something to be able to tap them out from behind. Anything that you can use to push against the back of the bush will do. For example, the wrong end of a drill bit and just tap it with something like a rubber mallet, but be sure to tap it very gently. You can see these ones came out quite easily just by pushing them with the end of the screwdriver. And pushing the new bushes into place was just as easy. Now, if you were fitting vintage machine heads to this guitar for the first time, so you were having to drill new screw holes, then you'd want to put the bushes in first. 
and that way you'd know that the tuning post was dead centre in the hole. So when you line the machine heads up, you drill the holes in the correct positions. And even if you're replacing like with like, as I'm doing here, you'd want to put the bushes in first, just to make sure they fit. Because if you put them in last and they don't fit, you'd have to take the machine heads off again in order to resize the hole. As you can see with this job, if you replace the machine heads with the same type of machine head, albeit an upgraded type, then the job is a lot easier and you don't have to drill any holes or leave any holes exposed. I always do two passes with a screwdriver, one to make sure everything's lined up and in place, and the second pass to actually tighten up the screws. I find when you're removing and replacing this kind of machine head, it's a good idea to have a magnetic screwdriver because the screw holes are in a really awkward position. When you're screwing the machine heads into place, it's important that they're screwed into place firmly, but more importantly, make sure you don't over tighten the screws because you don't want to strip the thread inside the hole. Once you've fitted the machine heads, all that's left to do is to put the strings back on. But before I put the strings back on, I'll just explain what the locking mechanism actually does. What are locking machine heads? I have seen some confusion, so I'll make it clear that locking machine heads do a completely different job to a locking nut. I'll cover a locking nut in a separate video. Here I've removed the locking screw so you can see just how long it is. And this is long enough to go all the way through the machine head and up the tuning post. So when you tighten it up, it locks the string into place in the hole in the tuning post. And this means you don't have to put multiple winds on the tuning post so it's easier to restring the guitar and also it will hold in place more firmly than just the friction from a few winds of string on the post. You can buy locking machine heads for most guitars and most styles of machine head. Replacing Fender style machine heads with locking machine heads. To be completely honest, this guitar doesn't need the machine heads to be replaced. However, because of the guitar's age, they are starting to tarnish. So I'll replace them with locking machine heads. And I'm going to replace them with actual fender machine heads to make sure it fits perfectly, because this is one of my favorite guitars. As we did with the previous guitar, the first thing to do is to remove the strings or to place a capo in place and loosen off the strings and take them off the tuning posts. And again, as I did earlier, I'm speeding this up by three times so that we can get through the boring bits more quickly. These are the modern Fender style machine heads which are mounted to the guitar using a hollow bolt, or I suppose you could call it a threaded bush. And to keep the machine heads aligned and stop them from spinning, they're held in place by a couple of locating pins. So removing these machine heads is as simple as removing the bolt and just pushing them out. When it comes to replacing machine heads, I really do like to work with this style of machine head because everything can be done from the top of the guitar because you don't need to turn the guitar over to access any screws and you just need to remove the one bolt so you don't have to move the guitar around risking damaging it or scratching it. Before replacing the machine heads, there's something else I need to explain. 
Staggered Machine Heads. The name Staggered Machine Heads doesn't make it obvious what these are. And you have to beware because there's companies using the word Staggered Machine Heads to mean something completely different. However, most companies use the word staggered to infer the fact that the tuning posts are different lengths. And this is done purposely so that the angle on the nut isn't too shallow or too abrupt. And this helps maintain the tuning of the guitar. Hopefully you can see the staggered machine heads on this particular guitar. So the bass three strings have longer tuning posts than the treble three strings. And this has the effect of making the break angle of the strings across the nut far more uniform. Staggered machine heads can come in both locking and non-locking varieties. And you can get different lengths of tuning post for each string or you can get three different lengths of tuning post, or just two different lengths of tuning post, as we've got in this example. Here we've got non-locking machine heads, with just two longer tuning posts on the bass strings. Now, there's good reason I explained staggered machine heads at this point in the video, and that's because the machine heads I'm fitting on this guitar are staggered. So, before I even start fitting them, I need to sort them out into three long and three short to make sure I put them on in the correct order. The three machine heads with the long tuning posts are on the bass side of the guitar, and the three machine heads with the short tuning posts are on the treble side of the guitar. Once you've sorted the machine heads into order, they're really easy to fit. You simply Put the locating pins into the holes in the back of the guitar. Make sure there's a washer in place to prevent the nut from digging into the wood. Then place the nut on and tighten it up. And you just need to repeat this process for each of the machine heads. Or, as I'm doing here, you can place the washers and the bolts down ready and bring the machine heads up through the back and tighten them up as you go. As I did with the first machine head installation, I'll just put the machine heads into place and tighten them up so they're finger tight. And this is just so I can check that the machine heads are sitting correctly and are lined up properly. And then I'll tighten them all up. If the locking screw is tight, then it will block the hole in the tuning post. So, before you try to put the strings back on, you first need to loosen off all the locking mechanisms. Once you've tightened up the machine heads and are happy with them, and once you've loosened off the tuning mechanism, you can put the strings back on. With the locking machine heads, you just push the strings through the hole until you're happy with the tension and then tighten them up so they hold the string into place properly. Now, even if the tuners have a locking mechanism, I usually put about a wind or even two winds on, just to make sure that the string isn't resting on the edge of the hole, because if it is, it can eventually cut through and break the string. If you've got the choice, it's far easier and far better to put new strings on. Even if the strings are in pretty good nick, once you've taken them off the tuning post and put them back on, because of the act of bending the strings and re-bending them, you'll work hardening them, so they're far more likely to break. Once you get used to locking machine heads, they're far easier to use than normal ones, because you don't have to worry about the string slipping, so you don't have to worry about how many winds you're putting on the tuning post.
to finish up the job you just need to cut off any excess guitar string so it's a neat job and there's no sharp edges and then you can tune the guitar if you buy the correct replacement machine heads the whole job just takes a few minutes let's take a look at another important specification of machine heads what is a tuning ratio or a gear ratio the ratio or the gearing ratio is something you'll find written in the description when you're looking to buy some machine heads or sometimes you'll find it printed or embossed on the machine heads themselves though this isn't very common and the ratio will be a one and a larger number commonly something between 14 and 21 and most commonly it's written with the larger number first however from time to time i have seen it written the other way around but it still means the same thing and the easy definition for this is how many winds of the tuning peg does it take to turn the tuning post one cycle so for example with a ratio of 14 to 1 it would take 14 turns of the tuning peg to rotate the tuning post one turn and at 18 to 1 it would take 18 turns of the tuning peg to turn the tuning post one turn now if you've got an existing guitar and you'd like to know what the ratio is for that guitar you can actually find out and here's how how to find the gear ratio of a machine head firstly you need something that can go through the hole in the tuning post that's maybe a couple of centimeters long and will act as a pointer for example a needle or the end of a guitar string or a piece of wire. I'm using a little bit of filament from a 3D printer. And just to make it clearer on camera, I'll also be using a bit of black tape to cover up one side of the tuning peg. Now, you can do this on the guitar. You just have to remove the string from the tuning peg. However, I'll be doing it off the guitar and then I can demonstrate it on a couple of different machine heads. And here's why I've stuck black tape on one side of the tuning peg. When you turn the tuning peg, because of the way you hold it, most people only actually turn it 180 degrees, which is actually half a turn. A complete turn would be right the way round and back to the black side. So to make sure I'm counting this correctly, I'm using this one side marked black to show when we've done a complete turn. The next thing I need to do is put whatever I've chosen to put through the hole and use as a marker into the hole. And I'm using this piece of filament because it's very clear. And I need to find a point that I can use as a marker to reference that. So I'll use the mounting hole in the machine head and line it up with that. So now all I have to do is turn the tuning peg and count the number of winds it takes for this locator to go right the way round and back to that point. So here we go. The ratio for this particular machine head was 15 to 1. Now let's prove that it actually works by testing it again, but this time on a machine head that I know 
is 14 to 1 because it's actually embossed on the machine head itself. Just like I've done previously, I'll put black tape on one side of the machine head and put the filament through the hole to use it as a marker. And I'll use one of the mounting pins to be the static reference point. So here we go. And that's 14 wines. So that proves that this method does work to find the gearing ratio for your machine heads. Now, I can't really talk about the gearing ratios of the machine heads without talking about the advantages and disadvantages of the tuning ratios. Most people, when they're upgrading their guitars, they go for the higher ratios. And there's two reasons for this. One is the fact that the higher ratio is far less likely to slip with the tension of the guitar strings. And the second advantage is, with a higher ratio, any movement of the machine head has a smaller impact on the tuning. So you can be far more accurate when you're trying to tune your guitar. However, there are people who prefer a lower ratio for their guitars. And these tend to be people who use a lot of alternative tuning or down tuning. And this is because with a lower ratio, you can make bigger steps in the tuning far more quickly. Right, to finish up this video, let's take a look at something a little bit unusual. Traditional tuners or tuning pegs. Probably the oldest and most traditional way of tuning a guitar was to use pegs. And I'm sure you've seen this system before on orchestral instruments, for example, a violin, viola, or cello. And this is simply a tapered peg going into a tapered hole, holding the string into place. So to tune an instrument, you'd have to pull back on the peg, turn it until the instrument was in tune, and then push it back into place. However, as I'm sure you can imagine, this isn't the easiest system to use. And you're probably thinking, this system isn't used on any modern guitars, but it still is. It's particularly popular amongst flamenco artists. And as you can imagine, because the tuner is just a solid peg, the ratio is one to one, which means it's really sensitive. However, a company by the name of Whitner have managed to build a geared peg to exactly the same format. So you can't tell it's not a traditional peg, but it gives you a ratio of 8.5 to one. And for a guitarist wanting to replace their tuning pegs with the Whitner ones, in some cases, it might be a case of simply removing the strings, taking the pegs out and then pushing new ones back in. Or, if the hole isn't big enough to take the Whitner tuners, you might have to ream the hole out slightly to make it larger, but maintain the taper. And to do this, you'd use a tool called a reamer. Because of the way they're geared, the Whitner tuners have the advantage that you can use them very much like normal machine heads, in that you don't have to pull the peg out and push it back in when you finish tuning. Right. Let's finish up here, because otherwise this video will go on all day. And thank you very much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're new to the channel and haven't already subscribed, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And if you're looking for some guitar lessons, either go to my channel and look in the playlists, where I've got some complete guitar courses, or visit www.ebooksforguitar.com and there you'll find lots of guitar courses in both right-handed and left-handed versions. Thanks again for watching.
and a special thanks to all my subscribers for all their support.